Hello, John Kister here. Uh, I'm going to take a moment just to present to you uh, uh, electrolysis, electroplating, steel plates. I'm making name plates here for my nephews, Mason and Gavin. Um, first, I start out just setting up a clean surface with uh, some bins I bought from Home Depot. bring out a car charger here. Uh, this is to make the sulfate solutions, the tin and copper sulfate solutions. Uh, I start out with a uh, typical mason jar, cleaned, emptied. Uh, I fill it um, most of the way with hot water. This is just regular tap water. Uh, now I'm making the copper sulfate solution first. I'm taking this, uh, this is a typical battery acid, I got it from AutoZone, $4 for a quart here. Uh, as far as acids go, it's a relatively weak acid, uh, however, it could cause uh, skin irritation, and when mixed with water, it's uh, pretty corrosive, so uh, you definitely want to be careful with that stuff. I wear gloves just to be safe, reposition the camera and the voltage source. Um, when mixing uh, water with with the acid, uh, you don't need a whole lot of acid. I use a four to one ratio, four parts water, one part acid. Uh, you just need enough acid to dissolve uh, a, de a decent amount of the copper in the solution. Uh, copper two uh, sulfate is uh, it's a, a reaction, a redox reaction uh, for each molecule of uh, acid you're replacing uh, you're filling each molecule of acid with one atom of uh, copper. Here I'm just stripping typical electrical wire. Uh, I strip one end, the short end is going to connect to the voltage source, and the long end uh, stripped is uh, going to be twisted up uh, just to make, just to add extra surface area. Now this, this is going to be one of the electrodes. It's going to be the electrode placed on the bottom of the jar. Uh, I left some of the insulation on that first wire. Uh, so that uh, it only makes contact with the solution at the bottom of the jar uh, because the bottom of the jar is where the copper is going to be dissolving in the solution. Uh, the second wire is going to be placed on the top of the surface and uh, you want to create a separation so that the copper atoms don't go straight from the bottom electrode, the cathode, straight to the anode on top. Um, the, that separation ensures that the more dense copper is going to remain on the bottom take a voltage meter just to test uh, my battery charger here. Uh, it's set on the 6 volt setting. Um, see how close to that we get. 5.5 volts, that'll do just fine. Now as far as the uh, amount of volts, uh, 6 volts is fine. Uh, I had time, if you, if you want it to go faster, 12 volts will work just fine too. Now if you look, you'll see bubbles coming off of that top electrode. Uh, the, like I said, the copper is going to be dissolving uh, at the bottom, at, at the cathode there. Uh, that's the positive terminal of the battery chargers connected to the bottom, the cathode. Uh, now I let these, uh, I let this setup sit there for a few minutes while I make some labels. I'll eventually uh, transfer the setup to a fume hood because the gas that's being evolved is uh, hydrogen. While not necessarily toxic, or dangerous. Uh, it is dangerous uh, only because it's highly flammable. Now after about an hour and a half or so we end up with this uh, pretty blue solution here. Uh, just pour it into the bin there. Now I'm going to make the 10-2 sulfate solution. It's the exact same process as the copper solution. Uh, four parts water to one part sulfuric acid. Uh, I use warm water. Now the electrodes this time, I'm using a, a lead-free uh, plumber's solder. Uh, the reason for this is because it doesn't contain lead. Uh, this solder is 95% tin, as in tin can material, and 5% silver. Now uh, I do the same thing, I make an electrode for the bottom, uh, where the silver is going to be forming, where the uh, tin, I'm sorry, tin is going to be dissolving the solution on the bottom, and, uh, and a top electrode. And I hook the top electrode up to the negative, the anode, and the bottom electrode uh, in the solution up to the red, the cathode. Uh, 
same as the copper. I leave it to sit for about an hour and a half or so. There's bubbles coming off of that top uh, anode there. After an hour, this is what I get. It doesn't look blue, but it's definitely turned uh, a grayish color. Now on the bottom of this, uh, I know the solution is finished because there's all that sediment. All that sediment is the tin that, that's uh, uh, precipitated out of solution. So it's saturated at this point. And later on, I'll regret letting all that uh, material fall out of the jar and into the uh, pan. Uh, it'll leave uneven marks there. Uh, for these sheets, I've acid etched them. Um, I'll be showing parts of that later. Uh, here I'm just s dipping them into the copper two sulfate. There's no electricity needed here because the because the nobility of the steel is lower than that of the copper. The copper readily adheres to the plain steel plates. The steel plates have just been cleaned and washed. Uh, it literally takes just a second for the copper to adhere. Um, now for the actual plating of the tin. Um, the voltage on the battery store on the battery charger is just a little little higher than I'd like. Uh, I find a lower voltage makes for a better uh, uh, plating solution. Uh, 3.14 volts will do, do just fine. This is uh, just wire I got from an old battery charger I don't use anymore. I'm connecting these uh, two batteries, the two C one and a half volt batteries uh, in series, just so that they add. Now when you're putting the tape on, you want to make sure that the pot, that you're aware of where the positive and negative ends are, uh, so you know which, uh, which end of the wire to connect to the cathode and anode. You can always test this by uh, sticking both ends into the solution. The one that bubbles is definitely the positive. Just again to make sure that the connections are right, 3.14 volts. I connect the uh, ends of the wires to the battery uh, onto the electrodes that I'll be using. Uh, now this first nameplate, um, I've all that black is just permanent marker. That's going to act as a as a resist to resist the plating. So I've colored over with permanent marker uh, the copper that I don't want to be co coated in tin. You can see immediately uh, when I dip that anode into the uh, I'm I'm sorry when I dip the cathode into the water the uh, tin immediately starts to adhere to. Um, area near the cathode and I use that cathode as a as a paintbrush almost just barely touching the surface being careful not to actually touch the plate if you touch the plate of course you create a short, short circuit and you'll make burn marks on your plate uh, after just a couple minutes brushing around uh, making sure it does a decent coat of tin uh, I remove it I use alcohol in the sink to wash away all the permanent marker do the same thing for the next two plates here. Now if I was using the battery charger, this would, this would still work, but there would be a, a powdery residue uh, that would wash off easily and it wouldn't be as bright. Um, now I didn't show it in the video, but in both of these solutions I used a brightener, uh, typical uh, sugar. Uh, because the coating was coming out a little dull, a little grayish rather than shiny, um, I found that using tip, just regular uh, table salt uh, creates a shinier, smoother coat. Uh, not very much, just, just a few sprinkles, a few pinches. This is the result. My, my nephew Mason should be happy. Back's a little ugly. From plain steel to the electro coated nameplate. Not too bad. Some of them came out kind of crappy. And Robbie the Robo Sapien. Thanks for watching.